Hello everybody. Today we'll be talking uh, again about questions flat earthers should answer and predict using their model. We'll be looking at uh, <coughs> observations and measurements and computations done by Charles Vogel, a German astrophysicist, a pioneer in the field of spectrographic observations of stars, in particular radial velocity computations of the stars. And in 1888 or 89, he managed to build a very precise instrument for such measurements. Uh, this is a picture of a telescope, which was attached to a system of prisms uh, that would split the light from a specific star that is being pointed to, the telescope will be tracking the, light, the, the star so it doesn't move in the field of view. After uh, splitting it, it will be cast into a photographic film. So the spectrum of the star light can be captured. And on the same film, uh, spectrum of the reference light will be captured too. So the precise measurements of uh, wavelengths can be determined. Usually it will be a helium, sorry, hydrogen uh, lamp uh, as used as a reference. Later it will be iron arc lamp that will be injected in the very front of the telescope to add to the entire beam, so all the errors are compensated for, even if the alignment is very, very off. So this was um, designed very in with the very precise measurements in mind. Uh, it was compensated for temperature variations and, and uh, misalignments and, and misalignments of photographic film and so on. Um, it was a state-of-the-art design at the time. And this is a publication in Astrophysical Issue Observatorium zum Potsdam, Volume 7, Part 1. Uh, and this is actually just a one big book, about 200 pages in size. Um, just in 1892, just about these observations. Um, and it will be about the spectroscopic measurements <clears throat> and there will be information about the telescope, the Microsoft, the development methods, the measuring, and microscope to measure these things and some different results for different stars, for, for Venus, for uh, sun and some stars and then tables and so on. <clears throat> we'll be specifically looking first at, because it's in German, let's go a year later, sorry, a year, <laughs> year earlier into a small note that uh, Vogel sent to monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. In volume 52, issue 2, December 1891, pages 87 to 97, so it's a 10-page note, a bit large note by modern standards, but things were moving slowly back then in terms of uh, publications. So it was good to keep people informed. The international, international scientific community wanted to know, for, for multi-year observations, it was good to give a progress report. So this article is freely available <clears throat> and in this article we see basically uh, an English translation, an English uh, exposition of the telescope, how it works, and measurement methods, accuracy and so on. But on page 93 he says, the vocal says, the first result of any importance with the spectrographic method furnished was the proof of the influence of the Earth's motion on the displacement, and which he means Doppler shift. 
which the earliest direct observations had failed to show with certainty. Uh, by the way, the title is on a spectrographic method of determining the velocity of stars in a line of sight. And what we, we call this thing uh, in modern astronomy, uh, radi radial velocity, because it's measuring just the radial component of the velocity. So using radial velocity, it is possible to determine the Earth's motion around the Sun. And how he did it? Uh, we can look at Alpha Auriga, uh, the brightest star in a constellation of Auriga, commonly called Capella. Uh, it's a very bright star, apparent magnitude zero, with a slight variability. Um, it's the sixth brightest star in the night sky, and the third one brightest in the northern celestial hemisphere after Arcturus and Vega and its declination is 45 degree 46 degree plus 46 degree which makes it really nice uh, observation uh, object because it's bright so it's easier to observe using spectroscopic method the exposition exposures are shorter it's easier to find <clears throat> And uh, it's usually pretty high over on the, over the horizon. And Vogel Vogel made a number of observations uh, on the many days. He made he captured the spectrum of the star together with the reference spectrum, and from there, using a microscope, he was able to determine the shift. In the spectral lines in millimeters actually in micrometers and then was able to determine the speed the velocity of the object relative to the telescope and these are the values here these are values in English miles per second and in October 6, 1888, it was minus 3.5 miles per second. Uh, the Earth and the Alpha Auriga were actually getting further away from each other. But then, in a few weeks later, it was opposite. They were getting, sorry, they, <laughs> here they were getting closer. And then they were getting further. Actually, the speed was accelerating, um, and then went to maximum of on my six of plus thirty three point two English miles per second. And there was a bit of break in observations, uh, to, but on September fifteen, it went back to minus three point six, very similar to what we started with on October just, uh, you know, almost a year, about a year. And then the question is, where is this difference coming from, right? The, as he mentions, it is because of Earth's motion around the Sun. If we look at the component of Earth velocity around the Sun towards the Auriga, Alpha Auriga, we can easily compute it and then subtract. And if this is good explanation, we would ex expect the value to be mostly constant, no matter which day of the year we took the observations and the differences, which there will be always some differences, it will never be constant, there will be always some error, either determination of one or another, uh, or position and so on there will be a bit of a wiggle around the mean and this is what we are seeing actually it's 
here it was changing between minus 3.6 and plus 33.2 but after correcting for earth velocity it, the values are much closer to each other now many times smaller differences uh, but once I can say maybe there's something else maybe there's some other similar process that has these values um, and maybe this is Alpha Auriga doing some periodic thing. Well, he also do one very similar measurements with other stars in different parts of the sky. And they show similar behavior. They change their observed velocity throughout the year. But if you subtract the Earth velocity, these velocities become constant. And what are these velocities? Well, if the Earth velocity is the Earth velocity around the Sun, and this is observed velocity of uh, Earth relative to star, then then becomes relative velocity of the star relative to the Sun. And that's basically all, usually what we are interested in. Because at the time the Vogel was doing his observation, uh, this was not, nobody was interested in getting Earth's motion, calculating it or confirming it. It was just a nuisance, you know. It was uh, fully acknowledged by every scientist and astronomer. The purpose of this uh, observation was not measuring the Earth velocity. It was just a byproduct. In fact, what we really want is remove this velocity, get rid of it, and get intrinsic velocity of the star relative to Sun. This way, it is much easier to do observation during any time of the year and, and do analysis of this velocity. Is it changing uh, on a longer scale, on a smaller scale? And indeed, uh, one of the Vogel's um, contribution was the discovery of something called spectroscopic binaries, which are usually two stars, one much dimmer than the other, so we only see one, or two actually, we can see both, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's both, and then we'll see uh, spectral lines wiggling in a matter of uh, days sometimes weeks, but often just a few days. And uh, after removing this component and measuring uh, every day, or maybe even twice a day, uh, the star, we can determine the period of this uh, wiggle, which is indicative of uh, usually two stars orbiting each other and they're moving away one of them is moving away and moving uh, closer to us and the other binary is doing the opposite. And yeah, that's it. Uh, you can find the actual um, publication of the full full document uh, published published later the same next year there's another note from another year uh, and here there's all the details uh, we are mostly interested in page 83 I believe 83 no not 83 Uh, here, how to re uh, reduce uh, movement to the reference frame of Sun by removing sun, uh, Earth rotation, uh, sorry, Earth motion around the Sun. And once it's done, um, it all depends on uh, how you call it. Uh, 
not uh, declination. You can do corrections, and here's the same observation of alpha origa. These are the, the, uh, in millimeters and different corrections and correction for for of the earth rotation. Sorry again, earth motion around the sun, yearly, <laughs> yearly motion, and then actual results. And we see again uh, these values around the year wiggle around the middle. And there's another method by Shainer using the same photographic plates, and they also so shows very similar value, and they also wiggle a little bit around, which also indicates that this is a good model, good model good predictor. And some of these uh, other observations are even better, um, where we can see very big differences, plus and minus. But then once we correct for the movement of Earth, they all become uh, stable, very close to each other, with uh, very small uh, differences. Uh, for example here, for example here, I really like the ones that change the sign quite a bit. For example here, uh, maybe this one too. Yeah, that is uh, mostly what I wanted to talk about. And the observed. You can say, well, there is a different uh, reason for these uh, changes in observed velocity. And I challenge you to find uh, some explanation for it, because a heliocentric model and all the development since then explains it very well. And this, of course, is uh, uh, <laughs> just one of the very first very very first uh, article on this topic these observations were done hundreds of times sorry thousands of times since then and it is routinely done today every day in spectroscopic observation as also in radio telescope observations and it's also important to note that this is, uh, uh, I believe this is in, uh, again, in uh, miles per second. So it, you see it goes up to about 30 kilometers per second here. And minus 30 kilometers per second here, uh, depending on the uh, time of the year. Again, this is in a, in relation to this star. Oriented to this star, but in this is around the orbit of the sun. It's also important to note that the Earth rotation on its own axis uh, during the day, of course, also plays a role in this uh, shift. But the rotation of Earth on the equator equates to about, uh, let's say, hmm, half kilometer per second. So, uh, order of magnitude less than this velocity. It might be somehow influential during close to zero. But during the span of the entire year, the Earth rotation is insignificant compared to the Earth's motion around the Sun. So we are not dealing with that. It uh, can be ignored. But if you don't want to ignore it and you have better equipment, of course it can be done. For example, here is an article from 2008, or sorry, 2016, about Doppler shift due to Earth's rotation. This uh, can be, this in particular, this one is used to <laughs> measure it in uh, 
uh, satellite movements. But the same principle can be used to do star measurements and uh, I'm pretty sure it can be used for extremely precise measurements. For example, exoplanet radial velocity method, uh, radial velocity method. Uh, these are some uh, Doppler spectroscopy. Um, I'm not sure if we will find uh, a lot of uh, yeah. Well, this is this is not what we are looking interested in. But at these levels of precision, this is meters per second that we need to be able to measure. Uh, we need to be able to compensate for Earth's both motion around the Sun and Earth's rotation because these uh, measurements are so sensitive uh, we need to remove it. Unless, uh, even if we are doing this uh, observation in space, uh, the satellite will also be usually on some uh, elliptical orbit and we'll need to compensate for that. Otherwise, we'll be seeing a wiggle. <laughs> Um, yeah, there are some details. This is just a popular science article. I'm pretty sure there might be some details in references, but uh, the better source is uh, actually reading articles and books uh, how this is done. Okay, that's all. And again, if you're a flat earther, please think of a way to explain these values. Again, these are in miles per second, uh, and the dates are obvious. Okay, bye-bye.